Hello, K-Hubbers. Welcome to my backyard garden. I grow a lot of vegetables here. See, I have some eggplants, okra, tomatoes, and pumpkins. But these are my favorites. Peas. Botanically, a fruit. However, peas are considered to be a vegetable in cooking. I like peas because they are rich in fiber and protein. But do you know that, aside from being nutritious, peas played an important role in biology? It happened in the mid 19th century. Interesting, huh? Let's listen to Mr. Jeffrey B. Galvez, college professor in the biology department of Miriam College and recipient of 2003 Gold Medal for Excellence in the field of research in the College of Sciences in De La Salle University, Manila, as he explains to his students how a scientist's observations of pea pods led to the principles of Mendelian genetics, the foundation of modern genetics. Yes, sir. Sir Douglas, can you lend us a hand? The designated posting air is too high, we can't reach it. Ah, no problem. Let me post that for you. Thank you, sir. Being small can be tough. Yeah, I wish I'm taller. Maybe you can take a growth enhancement pill or something. Actually, Neil, there is no magic pill in increasing your height. Yeah. In fact, your genes will determine how tall you will be. Mm. Sir, what are genes? Genes are important in determining your traits. For example, like being tall or being short, having curly hair or straight hair. They carry information to determine who you are. Heredity refers to all biological processes involved in the transmission of traits or characteristics from parents to their offspring. Like when someone tells you, you all act exactly like your parents. Very good, Tiffany. Knowledge about heredity can be traced back centuries ago. But most of the concepts are erroneous. I know what to do. Let's play a game. I'm going to tell you some concepts of heredity and you're going to tell if it is correct or if it holds true up to now. Are you up for it? Game! Okay, here's the first concept. First concept is the Pangene Hypothesis by Aristotle in the 4th century BC. Aristotle believed that the contributions of traits from the male and the female parents to their offsprings are very unequal. The female was taught to supply what he called the matter, or the substance, while the male supplies the motion, or the condition. His theory held that particles from all parts of the body come together to form the eggs and the sperm. And the changes that occurred in the various body parts during an organism's life could be passed on to the next generation. So what do you think? True or false? Correct or incorrect? Correct! Incorrect! If I go to a gym and lift weights, the muscles I develop won't be inherited by my children. Very good, Tiffany. Contrary to what Aristotle believed, acquired traits are not inheritable. So the second concept, blending hypothesis. In blending hypothesis, there is a general belief that offsprings possess intermediate traits coming from both parents. So, what do you think? Correct. correct! It's also incorrect. If the blending hypothesis is true, then all of us should look like our parents only. 
But there are kids who look like their grandparents, uncles, and aunts instead, right? Exactly. So, here comes the next one, the blood theory of heredity. Scientists in the 19th century, including the evolutionist Charles Darwin, believe that traits from parents are transmitted to their offsprings by blood. According to the blood theory of heredity, blood contains heredity information being passed on not only from the parents to offsprings, but also from one generation to the next. So, this one's easy. What do you think? That's true. Also not true. For example, I donate blood. The recipient will inherit my traits and characteristics. Very good, guys. All these beliefs are now considered as superstitions, particularly with the pioneering work of Gregor Mendel, who proved all of these concepts were not true. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk at the Distinguished Monastery at St. Thomas in the town of Brunn, Brno, in the Czech Republic. He was a high school teacher of physics and natural history who spent his free time conducting biological experiments near the monastery. He carried out his famous experiments on crosses of garden peas from What is the experiment about, sir? And why did you choose peas as objects of his experiment? Well, garden peas have several varieties of observable and contrasting characteristics, and they reproduce by self-pollination. By deliberately crossing two different varieties, that is, transferring the pollen of one to the pistil of another, he was able to follow the inheritance of a single, easily distinguishable trait. He even made exact counts of the number of plants bearing a specific trait. It was from this quantitative data that Mendel deduced the principles governing inheritance. Mendel was able to produce hybrid offsprings for several contrasting traits by cross-pollination. For example, he crossed a tall garden pea with the short one and a yellow-seeded plant with a green-seeded plant. In each case, he observed that the resulting first-generation hybrids denoted by the symbol F1, showed traits of only one parent. In his experiment on plant height, for example, all the F1 hybrids were tall, and on seed color, all F1 hybrids are yellow. He called those traits that appeared in the first generation as dominant, and the traits that did not appear as recessive. However, when Mendel allowed F1 generation to self-pollinate to produce the second hybrid generation, or F2, both the dominant and recessive traits reappeared. Moreover, both traits appeared in a constant proportion. About three-fourths of the plants showed the dominant traits and one-fourth showed the recessive traits. So, his study tells us that we can predict inheritance traits of living organisms. That's right. Mendel concluded that sex cells, or gametes, of garden peas contains factors that included in the appearance of a certain trait. 
These factors Mendel was referring to were later called genes by a Danish biologist, Wilhelm Ludwig Johansen, in 1909. Sir, what did he do with his discoveries? Well, Neil, he reported all his findings to the Natural History Society, which then published his findings and interpretation in a scientific journal in 1866. His contemporaries, however, did not appreciate his work. It was 16 years later, in 1900s, when the European botanists Hugo Vries, Karl Korenz, and Erich von Schermark rediscovered his work and credited him for pioneering this field of genetics. Unfortunately, his achievement was fully recognized only after 50 years. His little experiment about garden peas led to the discipline of genetics, and brought about Mendel's principles of inheritance. Well, better late than never, a thesis work was eventually recognized. And people's knowledge about heredity and genetics is being applied in different ways to improve our lives. Genetic engineering, or the direct human manipulation of an organism's genome, using modern DNA technology has applications in research, industry and agriculture and can be used on a wide range of plants animals and microorganisms. It has allowed scientists to create new strains of plants that are high yielding and resistant to pests through recombinant DNA technology or the bringing together of genetic materials from multiple sources creating sequences that would not otherwise be found in biological organisms. An organism whose genetic information has been altered using these techniques is known as a genetically modified organism or a GMO. More importantly, genetic engineering is being used to cure or treat a disease caused by an abnormal gene. Gene therapy is a method for correcting defective genes responsible for causing a specific disease. To treat a disease caused by DNA damage, the normal gene is inserted into the genome to replace the damaged gene. Gene therapy is still in the experimental stage. There are major problems which scientists have to overcome before gene therapy becomes a common technique to cure diseases.
I hope scientists will stop making questions that may lead to breakthroughs of great importance, especially in gene therapy. Yeah, just like Mandel, who after having a hard time getting the importance of his experiment accepted, <laughs> made a huge discovery that changed the whole world. That is why we must encourage everyone to never stop exploring our world, because we may hold the answers to tomorrow's discoveries. Yeah. Your gene is something you will have all of your life. And while scientists continue to do research in the hope of finding ways to improve human beings, acceptance of abnormalities found in a few individuals is important to give them the feeling of life's worth and belongingness. For example, if you have a short friend and he's sensitive about his height, you can do activities together that don't require height attribute like singing or playing video games. By accepting your friend as he is, whether he's too tall or too short, you are also helping him build self-acceptance. See you later, K-Hubbers. Bye!